This is here the future of Mercedes vehicles, the upcoming Mercedes CLA in the electric form. And this is about technology, sustainability and light. Because light design plays a huge role. If we darken up here a little bit, then we can see already in the front, you can have some light in this first show car. But the whole design supposed to be quite realistic already. On the US market, you will surely get all glowing star in the front. If it's available in the European market, we have to see this small star pattern. We see it, for example, in nowadays AMG lines already. And we can see this new design language is even more fluent and aerodynamic. Light strip going all the way through. The color here is called pomegranate red, by the way. And a nice feature we can also see on the top here, this glass roof. We also have these small stars and they are also illuminated. Works with an illumination from the side here. The special thing about this platform here, this architecture is, it's called MMA. No, it's not mixed martial arts, what Mercedes wants to use against BMW and Audi. <laughs> it stands for Mercedes Modular Architecture. This will be a CLA, electric, but also with combustion engines still. So this platform can house both. And this idea from this whole platform and all the figures we're going to tell you will also be used for a CLA shooting brake and also for two SUVs. 21 inch wheels with this micro star pattern once again. It's very interesting that they used this pattern even more, their original logo, because the Mercedes star is one of the highest worthing brand logos out there worldwide. Yeah, so it probably only makes sense. The length here of this CLA concept is 187 inches. And then you can also imagine this shooting brake or then SUVs, similar length and so on. As for the technology on the inside, as I said, there will be combustion engines, but also then it's like an electric first platform, not totally dedicated, but primary focus on electric. Mercedes says that this vehicle here has only a consumption of about 12 kilowatt hours per one kilometers. That's five miles per kilowatt hour. Of course, very impressive because they're taking over technology from Formula One and also from their EQXX vision vehicle, which was trimmed on highest efficiency. So they are going for the efficiency thing rather than just making the battery bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But overall, the range they promise is 750 kilometers or 450 miles. If that's true, we'll see about that later when we drive it, the final vehicle. But even if it would be like a realistic 600 kilometers or 370 miles, this would still mean a lot for this segment here. We don't see any charging flap here in this design study here. However, I can already tell that is what they plan. They now will use an 800 volt architecture and this will enable DC quick charging up to 250 kilowatt peak. They say in 15 minutes, the quick charging like 10 to 80% is done. Breathe in, breathe out. No, I'm not starting any yoga session here. I just want to tell you that you will either have rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, and of course, one electric motor each, but we will still keep a rear wheel bias then also in the all wheel drive versions. The overall efficiency, by the way, from the battery energy to the drivetrain, supposed to be at 93%. That is, of course, really massive and such a huge difference. That's also why electric vehicles are more efficient, because they convert the energy really onto the wheels, onto the road, whereas with combustion engines, most is actually lost in heat. Let's now take a look at the interior here. There's a mechanism with, you know, like ghost sliding hand thing. <laughs> Interesting. Here, inside of the doors, we see a nice ambient lighting integration. It can also run basically throughout that you have this, you know, light show on the inside as well. Then here, more, I would say, like maybe like monolithic. <laughs> here, this control for the seat and so on. Window levers and the downside in these door pockets here. We have illumination. And this here is actually a vegan silk, very interesting new material. Then here we have a paper-based material. It's also interesting. So new materials coming in there. And the floor mats are made from bamboo fiber. That's also an interesting idea for sure. And then you can see bright interior styling, steering wheel, almost spaceship ship style. Yeah, this is like three-dimensional. Not sure if this will be according to safety regulations or airbag popping up, but I think it's a definitely interesting idea. And these air vents here, or air vent style at the same time, it is thought about that later you can maybe just like turn them again to have physical dials. That would be cool when they make their return. Then the seats, 
have this, I would say, sporty integrated head restraint design. On the outside, there's recycled uh, PET fiber. However, on the inside and also inside of the doors, they still use animal skin for this one. It's supposed to have some kind of certification and so on, but that's more a greenwashing thing. Remember, the leather industry wants to pay me massive amounts of money that I say leather is great and animal friendly and so on. But I refuse because I'd rather tell you the truth than getting rich. That's you know my principle. And of course, animal skin leather is not a sustainable material and should not be here in a modern electric vehicle concept. Lewis Hamilton is also with me on this, but obviously, yeah, the board of management is not consistent there yet. Then sitting down here, I mean it's a spectacular concept from the exterior, but headroom and wise still works with 189 or six foot two. And Wow, this is like really like spaceship surrounding. Not sure if the windscreen really will be that small. And we have a lot of screens here. And they will also use a new MBOS, so a new own op operating system, new de developed. So all what we cannot see right now, everything is like behind the visual part, is also totally changed. Interior cockpit overview. Wow, what a show indeed with screens, screens, screens digital instruments on the left and this huge central screen and the passenger screen then on the right side, all integrated in this one dash. It's a very nice deco element behind it as well. And also the steering wheel here with the illumination. Um, so everything really sculptural, three-dimensional, both what you can see and feel and also what's happening actually in the screens. I'll also go in detail on that very soon. In the lower part, we have this MBOS, like gaming computing thing, like it looks like a gaming PC. Also represents the supercomputing and AI possibility, what should supposed to work in the background. Then we have the cup holders here, also illuminated, and an inductive charging pattern, this glass styling. Here there will be a volume control as well. And this armrest you can then fold up when it will be a real working car later on. I would like to know from you guys, what do you think about this new concept or dash atmosphere? What is a special thing also about that is, Mercedes wants to start here with the smaller, most affordable models. Of course, it won't be cheap. Mercedes is never cheap, but they want to start new technologies here then, not necessarily with the S-Class, but with the more affordable models and then transport to other models that you can even get new stuff, new tech in compact. Mercedes vehicles. There's a fancy detail here of this seat belt, you know, and also with the contrast at the side. Why not being a little playful with, let's say, standard stuff? Look at that open space there in the lower part between the passenger and the driver's seat. This reminds me of a very early Tesla Model S where you could also maybe like store handbags there or something. So lot to be used there and of course you can also just use it as a deco element the light runs through it so whatever if it's just decoration or also real usage space it's up to you here in this demo mode we can see they want to stress three-dimensional views wherever possible with this you know higher cpu power and so on and a part of the efficiency concept is also an updated heat pump concept by the way so this like this demo mode you will also have different modes for driving or how you feel on the interior and this will also then change the color even go through the other screens and in the ambient lighting and so on. I would love when the passenger really gets this passenger event and you can actually also turn it like also in this huge styling that would be a turn of events right when we go from hashtag capacitive BS to real things you can see also you will basically control it on the screen but like in the Ford Mustang Mach E this is kind of like mounted on the screen and would have the function as you would use your finger on the screen. So it's a very interesting blending of analog and digital work uh, world. And here on the passenger screen, Gordon Wagner sends us an SMS. <laughs> um, and this will be then used like, you know, for movies and stuff. Well, we know a lot of concept vehicles that do not offer any headroom, especially in the rear, but here I can still sit here as a tall adult. That would also work, also legroom wise. Of course, we have to see what will be like the series bench here and so on. I found very interesting that they use a lot of sensual design deals with a lot of swinging lines here in the interior. Of course, since it's, they have this EV platform as well, we have a low floor here in the bottom. You can easily use high floor mat. It's really cool. And this bamboo material feels really great. So I like that. We also have a separate climate control here for the rear passengers then. So 
they want to use this platform that they can also offer enough space in the rear. Remember, it's actually not a super long vehicle. So the usage of space is so far actually quite decent. And about the sustainability aspect, by the way, they will also use CO2 reduction for the steel and aluminum production. So they try to go really full circle and also that you can later on, if the car would you know, become garbage at some point, you can also use, reuse the materials and so on. So recycling use in production already, but then also recycle the car later on. That's also a part of the new philosophy. One detailed thing they thought about now is when there's a child on the rear seats, for example, and you stop in front of a mall or something, and sometimes children are being forgotten in the vehicle when it's really hot outside, there's a special panoramic roof, this can lead to very dangerous situations. So I say this now, thought about a breathing sensor and it basically combines information if there's someone on the front seat, if not, plus the car detects a very short or shallow breathing of a child, then there's an alarm trigger sent to the smartphone, you know, whoever is connected with the car with the smartphone. And, you know, in all emergency cases, it could also activate the AC, for example, and then maybe also give warnings to the outside, like with horn and flashing and so on. So different escalation levels are possible to prevent serious injury then to children being left alone in the vehicle. Here you can see the LiDAR sensor. So they will also step up the game as for autonomous driving. Now, I overall think that design works very well. It is not a very long car but it seems to be long and very fluent in the design lines. And I also think it's cool that they begin with some new technologies actually from the compact segment. The biggest step will of course be the overall efficiency, the immense range gain, because we also need compact electric vehicles that just have higher range. The interior ideas I found also very interesting because they have a lot of sculptural elements and looking forward also to the new software architecture overall then. Sustainability, this is actually a thing that is often forgotten because the raw material use is so important because especially for electric vehicles, they first take more CO2 in the production and later then have less CO2 overall output in comparison to combustion engine cars. And you know that the break even then depends really on the energy source and so on and so on. But even more than important to bring the CO2 down in the production process, here, of course, they need to be a little bit more consistent with the non-usage of animal skin. What do you think about this new CLA concept? Is this supposed to be a good future for Mercedes? Tell me in the comments and also join us for more future vehicles.